Well, speaking of, let's move on to the next player, Chris Olave. Dynasty League Football December startup AP was wide receiver 11. He was wide receiver 25 in half PPR total points, wide receiver 26 and half PPR points per game, 26.7% target share, eighth and eight in air yards, 40th in red zone targets, though, which was a little bit disappointing to see. But interestingly, he only played 66% of the offensive snaps this year. Uh, and I thought that was especially interesting because of the opportunity he had, <laughs> you know, the the production he had to only be on the field that much. Um, and eighth in air yards is still pretty amazing, even when you had Andy Dalton for most of the year. We know how, how the air yards were just stacking up when he was playing with Jameis Winston. But just like, I mean, just like Garrett Wilson, like everything's there. You, you can't complain about anything really about his profile. Skyler, what do we think? Yeah, Chris Olave, I mean, he missed two games and the team completely fell off the map the second half of the season. I think that affected a lot of the perception here, but you walk you walk through parts of last season and the difference between Kerry Wilson and Chris Olave is so darn negligible. You, even when you go back to the prospect profiles of these guys, it's, it's neck and neck, depending whose model or what you're using to base it off of. There were people who preferred Chris Olave to Garrett Wilson or Garrett Wilson to Chris Olave. The biggest knock against Chris Olave versus Garrett Wilson was Chris Olave coming back for that fourth year. But after a COVID season, he decides to come back and he absolutely crushes it. Still goes 11th overall in the draft. Maybe people weighed too much into that, that year of him going back. I mean, the breakout age was even before Garrett Wilson. So it's not like Chris Olave came on, you know, at a much different point in his career than Garrett Wilson. It's just interesting. You look at these guys they are both, you got six foot 185, six foot 185, 22.5 years old, 22.6 years old, 4.3840, 4.3940, 67th percentile speed score, 66th percentile speed score. I think you get where I'm going here. I think they're it's the best almost, comparables for each other on player profile. They probably they are, are. Honestly, <laughs> one of the funniest things. I, Everything I one about of those these guys. Comparison yeah. sometimes, but that one is that they were just like, well, I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just, there are little differences, little nuances to their games where they are a little different players for me personally. But really, you're splitting hairs here. And with what they both gave us, both had over 70 receptions, over 1,000 yards, and four touchdowns as rookies. Wyatt, when we got started, listed a lot of the, um, you know, the metric measurables. They were top, both were top 12 in a whole bunch of counting stats uh, as well as advanced stats. G the difference between these two in market, though, has been shocking early season. It's come down to earth. You know, in the last couple of weeks, we host every single day. We host startup mock drafts out of our Discord. And so I've I've seen this shift kind of happen. And I think it's getting more to a place that makes sense based on what we've seen. But in January, there was a round of ADP difference between these guys. I mean, why was saying, yeah, I got Garrett Wilson as my wide receiver six. Well, when you're when you're asking who are we tearing down to, a tier down from in market between wide receiver five, six prices is like wide receiver. 12 to 15, which is where guys like you mentioned DK, but also the other two names we mentioned here with Chris Olave and Drake London, and there really shouldn't be anything between these guys. So one comment I will make about preference here is it's coming down to price for me. As much as I love Garrett Wilson, I'm more interested in Chris Olave if the entry cost is significantly cheaper, which based by those numbers, in my opinion, there, there, he is a lot cheaper. Um, yeah, it just shouldn't be that big of a difference. I mean, we mentioned Garrett Wilson's always going routine at the end of the second round. Chris Olave was sliding to the back of the third, early fourth, and that gap just should not be there. These guys are so darn close. They're in very similar team situations, to be honest, um, where there's potential, you know, competition for targets, but no one that's a true threat. Both these guys are going to see 20 to 25% of their team targets at a minimum. It could even go higher. It really just depends. And they both have kind of murky quarterback situations, teams that aren't really sure where they're at. So I would just urge people to look in your league. If you have Garrett Wilson, go see if you can get a second on top of Chris Olave to make that swap, because that's just a, that's just a, a winning move in my opinion. Yeah, I, I've got Garrett Wilson the highest in wide receiver five because I did like him as a prospect more than these two um, solidly. Uh, but they're all top 12 for me. And like you said, like just if you want to tear down from if you're able to tear down from Garrett Wilson to one of these two, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Matt, what do you think? I mean, yeah, I, I absolutely think that that's 
if it's if it's a possibility, but I think the perception on Chris Olave, as Skyler kind of said, is is it's getting a lot closer, um, and, and it's going to be really difficult to to tear down because people are, you know, as you now have an entire season's worth of data, and people are collecting all of that data and, and doing some early prospecting for next season as well. It's becoming more of a common norm realizing that he did lead all rookie wide receivers in points per game, and had two less games, sure, but obviously would have had more counting stats than. Um, Garrett Wilson, as his per game averages suggest, if he was able to play those final two games um, or those extra two games, rather 26.7% target share, 29.3% target rate on a 14 yard average depth of target, which is 15th, 10th and 10th respectively. And he broke he broke the single game rookie record for most air yards in a single game. I think it was that week three game with Jameis still under center and 303 air yards in a single game. And that's also third all time in the NFL since they've been tracking the stat like yeah, you you said everything, and it, and it is kind of cliche, like, what doesn't he do well? But that's very true for Chris Olave, and they are very, very similar players. So if you can add any perceived value additional to uh, trading down from Garrett Wilson to Chris Olave, if that market perception is getting to that wide receiver four, wide receiver five range, which I, I absolutely don't mind, but I do think they're going to have absolutely similar production throughout their careers. And, you know, as said, it was... The, their rookie situations were not really that much different. I, I know there was a lot of quarterback woes in New York, but it, <laughs> there are in New <laughs> Orleans, and and there may continue to be. Um, and the same goes for for New York as well. We like to, you know, kind of place a lot of these potential free agents and in, in these quarterback players there, but but nobody's there yet, and, and that that situation is just as unknown as Olave. So, yeah, I like Olave. In the exact same tier as Garrett Wilson, um, I did have him a little bit lower coming into the class because I took into account that early declare. I think a little more than I or er, that early declare status a little more than I should. Um, but Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave are the clear wide receiver one A and B of this class, and I, I think it's going to continue for a, a decade. Yeah, yeah they I, might not have Josh Allen, but really, I mean, this is what you're getting from with Stephon Diggs. This is a name I want to throw that out there again. I mean, Stefan Diggs, you view him as as important as they come to your winning team. I think if you could pivot off Stefan Diggs at this point for one of these two players, I think you can get Chris Olave for Stefan Diggs. You're making a parallel move, but you are getting seven years younger, which is huge. Uh, I, honestly, uh, Chris Olave should not be going after Stefan Diggs in startup drafts. He shouldn't be viewed after, but he is. I mean, current ADP Stefan Diggs is still above, you know, Chris Olave. He's not above Garrett Wilson, but. I mean, that's what we're looking here. I mean, Austin, if I brought him up before, if I can put a second, you know, in this class, I have anything between 204 to 212, and I can put that on top of Austin Eckler and grab Chris Olave. I mean, that would be a, a home run move as well. Yeah, to put that in perspective a little bit even more, Stefan Diggs in 2022, 15.4 half PPR points per game. As I mentioned before, Garrett Wilson in games without Zach Wilson, 14.3. So. Yeah, well, there was a stretch of the there was a stretch of the season. There was a stretch of the season, like an eight week stretch, where Garrett Wilson had actually, I think it was everything I, I sent to you. It was everything after week eight or nine, where he averaged more points per game than Stephon Diggs for the rest of the year. Because Wyatt made a comment in Discord, and people were asking about these players. He said, "Don't be surprised when Garrett Wilson's putting up Stephon Diggs level production next season." And I was like, "Honestly, second half of the season, he put up Stephon Diggs level production." Right. He outscored him, and Chris Olave was not very far off. Um, second half of the season was stronger for Wilson at points than Chris Olave's for various reasons. But honestly, these guys are already producing right there, if not already as good or better than a player like Stephon Diggs. And if you can get ahead of that early, I don't think you'll have that decision potentially in four months. 